Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. Today I want to talk about derivatives. Anyone who's been reading business news or listening to it on the radio will have been hearing about this enormous market in derivatives that threatens to drag the whole financial system down. So, of course, the question arises, well, what exactly is this derivative that everyone's talking about? Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that a derivative is, is at its essence, a very simple concept. But uh, the bad news is that it sort of encompasses this enormous world of financial instruments. So each derivative is kind of slightly different, although it does have a single kind of binding element that makes it similar. So what exactly is a derivative? Let's see if we can uh, spell out as simply as possible. Okay, so here's a very a simple example. And it's based around our good friend Terry. Remember him? Here he is. Now Terry is, um, Terry McLeod, his name is. He's actually the head of the clan McLeod, okay? And every year at around Thanksgiving, the clan descends on Terry's home. We're talking about hundreds of people. And he has to buy turkeys to feed them all. It usually costs him about 20 turkeys. Okay, we're talking big old turkeys there. 20 turkeys it takes. Now in the past, Terry used to go to the supermarket the week before Thanksgiving and he'd say, excuse me, I have 20 turkeys. And the, the uh, butcher would say, no problems, here's 20 turkeys. No, no problems. But a couple of years ago, he went to the store and they were out of turkeys. There were nothing. And it was a big problem for him because his family kind of revolted. He had to serve them ham, which was a complete nightmare. Anyway, so he decided after that very traumatic event that he was going to try and prearrange the delivery of his turkeys. So he went out and he tried to find the biggest turkey farm that he could. And this is Bailey's Farms. And it's uh, way out in the countryside there. And uh, here's old Mr. Bailey. He's a very nice chap, very accommodating. And he said to Mr. Bailey, uh, can, is there any way that you can kind of ensure that I get delivered 20 turkeys at Thanksgiving. And Mr. Bay said, well, I can't just guarantee that, you know, but I'll tell you what I can do. I can allow you to kind of pre-buy the turkeys. You know, if you pay me a certain amount of money now, then I'll, I'll deliver you 20 turkeys, you know, anytime you like before Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving. So he's like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. So he says, uh, well, I'm not sure how much turkeys cost. I mean, some years they're cheap, $13. Some years they're expensive, like 25 bucks. How about we split the difference and say $15, $20, 20 turkeys at $15. All right, says Mr. Bailey, that sounds fair enough. So Terry provides him with $300, that's uh, 20 turkeys at uh, this princely price of $15. Hands that money across. Mr. Bailey provides a note, it's like an IOU. So IOU, 20 turkeys, to pick up at any time before Thanksgiving. And what we've got is a contract. And this contract, okay, this agreement, is derived from something underlying. Okay, and what's underlying it are the turkeys. Okay, it's this element underlying it. But essentially what this is, is a contract to deliver 20 turkeys before Thanksgiving, paid for already by our friend Terry. Okay, and this is the first okay, of, what, of, uh, of one of three types of derivatives. But it's, it basically shows you what a derivative is. A derivative is essentially a contract that's based on something else, an agreement based on something else, in this case, turkeys. So this is the first type so three types, really, of, uh, of, of derivative. And this is the first, which is the future or forward. Okay, because in the future, Mr. Bailey will be delivering 20 turkeys to Terry. Hence, it's a future or a forward contract. Okay, the second type we have is called an option. And an option is the option gives the buyer the option to buy or sell something. Okay, so say in this case, turkey is a little... Oh, Terry's a little worried about Mr. Bailey. He's worried that Mr. Bailey's farm might fail. Okay, so he says, that's a very small chance, of course, tiny chance, but it's possible. So he thinks, what I'll do is I'll hedge this contract by taking out an option. Okay, what he does is he finds another turkey farmer all the way out here in the countryside, and this is the Jones farm. Okay, Mr. Jones, he's a, he's a nice enough chap, but you know, not as reliable. But what he does is he says to Mr. Jones, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $50, 50 bucks, for the right to buy 20 turkeys at $15, okay, at any time before, say, the 23rd of, of, of November. Okay, so what he's doing is he's buying the option to buy. It cost him $50. In return, he gets this note. It's an option, okay, for 20 turkeys at $15, all right? So he, he has the right to exercise that option at any point before, say, the 23rd of November, okay? So what he's done in total to, secure, to make sure that he's gonna get his 20 turkeys, absolutely sure, he's paid $300 to Mr. Uh, uh, to, to Mr. Bailey here. But in case there's a problem, he's got this hedge, okay, which is his option to buy uh, $20 or 20 turkeys at $15, which he's, he's, he's paid $50 for, okay? But that option can expire or will expire on the 23rd if he doesn't exercise it. If he doesn't buy those turkeys, if he doesn't exercise it, he's paid $50, which he never sees again, and he is uh, 
but he's actually secured his, his right to, uh, to get 20 turkeys should Mr. Bailey not deliver. Okay? So that's an option, often, often used by, as, as a hedge by people. Okay? So that's the second type. The third type is called a swap. Okay? And that's when you have, say, an instrument that has a floating interest rate. So month to month, depending on where the underlying interest rate is, say LIBOR or whatever, you don't know what the interest rate is going to be on the loan that you have or the bond. And what a lot of people like to do is they like to, to take that floating rate where there's uncertainty and swap it for a fixed rate. So say a bank will say, okay, well, um, you just pay you know, 5% a month and we'll take the risk that one month it might be 3.5% or one, might, one month it might be 7.5% and we'll pay the difference. So you know, obviously they're gambling that it's all going to be lower or at about the same rate. So that's, how, that's where the swap comes in, where you swap a floating rate for a fixed rate. Okay, but again, it's a contract that's based on the underlying instrument, which is in fact the bond or the loan that you're talking about. So hence, once again, we're talking about this underlying, and there, there are various things that can underlie these various contracts. Okay, whoops, underlying, okay, whoops, M-G, I can't even spell. So what have we got underlying? Well, in this case, we've got turkeys, and turkeys are a commodity. Okay, and commodities can include gold, silver, soybeans, wheat, whatever. In the swap case, we, the underlying was an interest rate. And interest rates, in fact, are one of the, uh, the biggest um, underlyings in the, in, the in the business of derivatives. So interest rates. What else have you got? Well, you've got, uh, we, have, um, we have credit derivatives, credit default swaps. So credit is an underlying. What else have we got? Uh, we ha can have foreign exchange, forex. We can have, um, we can have the weather. Okay, we've got the weathers in there equities, mortgages, and on and on and on and on. There's all sorts of things that you can have as your underlying instrument in your derivative. But essentially, once again, all the derivative is is this contract that's written based on the underlying. And here's the great thing about derivatives. Because of this contract, you can trade them. Okay, and, play, and uh, derivatives are traded in two places. They're either traded on an exchange. Okay, so traded on an exchange, kind of like, um, you know, the exchanges in Japan or the exchanges or the S&P 500 or any of these exchanges, or they can be traded over the counter. And the over the counter case is whenever it's an, an agreement between one person and another. So in an exchange, you have this exchange that's working where you use the exchange to trade through and you can see the prices listed. In an over the counter market, it's just an agreement. In this case, it's an agreement between Terry and Mr. Bailey. In this case, an agreement between Terry and Mr. Jones. Now, how does this trade? Well, say for example, Terry's grandmother gets sick in Canada and he decides to go to Canada and he has to, he has to bail on the whole Thanksgiving thing. He can't have the clan McLeod at his house. What does he do? Well, he cancels it, obviously. Everyone gets irritated at him, but he's, the worst thing is, is he's, got, he's paid $300 for these turkeys. But he can trade this note. He can go to his neighbor and say, look, uh, the week before Thanksgiving, and say, look, you know, I, I need to sell this. I've got these turkeys coming, but I, I can't use them. Can you use them? And the neighbor might say, hmm, okay, well, yeah, I, I can use them. I'll pay you $150 for it. Okay, so clearly he's losing money on the deal. But on the other hand, he might go to the, his neighbor and say, if there's, like a, if there's a problem with turkey supply that year, as there was the year that he went to the supermarket, he can go to his neighbor and he can say, you know, there's not very many turkeys this year. How about um, I sell you these 20 turkeys, I give you this note for these 20 turkeys, and you can... Um, uh, you can pay me $400 for it. And the guy might say, absolutely, because then he can go to the supermarket and sell them for even more, okay, because there's so much demand. So in that case, Terry can see his, he can actually trade his note, his, his contract, for more than its face value at, uh, at $300. And that's what happens with these contracts, is that, is that most of the people who are trading them aren't really interested in what's underlying at all. They aren't interested in the interest rates. They aren't interested in the commodities. They're interested in the contract and the fact that they can trade that contract up or trade that contract down. So what's the problem with this? Why are people worried about it? Well, basically two reasons. Firstly, because people use leverage when they're, talk when they're using uh, derivatives, okay, which means you're using borrowed money, which means that you know, if, you, if the price of the, uh, the contract goes up, then you, know, you make money, there's no problems. But if the price of the contract goes down, it means you can lose all of your money because you've borrowed a whole bunch. It means you can lose all of your principal very, very quickly. The second is because of the counterparty risk. We talked about Mr. Bailey's problems here. Clearly, Terry is not a risk to uh, Mr. Bailey because Mr. Bailey's already got his $300, so that counterparty is taken care of. But Mr. Bailey is a risk to Terry, which is why he took out this option, because if Mr. Bailey, goes, uh, if Mr. Bailey has a problem or his, his, his farm goes under, it means that Terry's got this note for 20 turkeys. He's got to feed 200 people. Okay? He's got no turkeys coming in because Mr. Bailey's not going to be supp supplying him. Perhaps he hasn't covered himself with an option. In that situation, that counterparty risk has caught Terry, and that means it's going to leave him very badly. 
needing a Thanksgiving drink.